For many of us, the Thanksgiving meal is one of the most beloved culinary traditions of the year. But that feast usually ends with plentiful leftovers and then some. That extra sum, so to speak, often ends up in the garbage and adds to the much larger problem of food waste in this country. That makes it a good time to look at the burgeoning movement to rethink our attitudes and approach about all of this. Special correspondent Allison Aubrey of NPR showed us the depth of the problem in previous reports, and she's back for a special series this week. Allison, welcome. Hi there. Good to be here, Judy. And it's good to have you back. So the numbers are staggering, something like 30 to 40 percent of the food we produce never makes it to the table. That's right. And when these numbers were first documented several years ago, the reaction was, how could this be? This is insane, right? Now, two years later, there are all kinds of solutions being tried all over the country. For instance, we visited farmers in Massachusetts. They are taking food waste, streams of food that can't be eaten, and turning it into electricity, into renewable energy. Now, we start the series in California. That's because the state is really leading the way. I traveled with producer Mary Beth Durkin around the state, and here's what we found. When we first came to Salinas Valley four years ago, we saw walls of leafy greens being tossed away, and it's still happening. On peak days, up to 200 tons of produce is headed to this dump. It's all surplus from nearby farms and packaging facilities. One reason these greens end up here is because they weren't shipped in time to give grocers enough shelf time to sell them. But it was these plastic bags that really frustrated Cesar Zanuga. He's the facility's waste manager. It's sad to receive all this material and not put it to a better use. Um, the plastic, it makes it hard to compost as well. If you shred the plastic with the organics, it contaminates the compost. All this used to be tossed in a landfill where it would rot and emit methane, a greenhouse gas. But Cesar Zanuga says there's a new solution. Look at all that lettuce, and it's all in plastic. Yeah, it's all film plastic. This is the same stuff we saw four years ago. Now we have this machine, the debagger, which separates that film plastic from the lettuce. All of that bagged lettuce goes in here. As you can see, it's being separated. The ah, plastic is yeah. coming out here. And if you walk around the corner here, you'll see the organic materials coming out on this side into this container here. Whoa, look at that, it's like a slurry. We call it a salsa. Ah, so a salsa of wasted lettuce. So here's where you take all of that lettuce slurry and turn it into something more valuable? After we debag the material and get the slurry out of it, we will mix it with the material that's behind us and compost it. So you're turning it into compost and then selling it back to farmers? Yeah, we sell it back to the farmers and they place it back on the agricultural lands to grow more produce for us. So it's a real reuse recycle. And composting can reduce or prevent the release of methane as these greens break down. This is beneficial because methane is a significant contributor to greenhouse gas emissions and a factor in climate change. In addition to composting, recovering edible food before it makes it to a landfill is another effective way to prevent food waste. In the coming year, California will roll out new regulations that require food businesses, like grocery stores and wholesale distributors, to donate their edible food waste. By 2022, if they don't comply, businesses could be fined. Right now, the easiest thing to do is to just throw whatever extra food you have out. So with this new law, it's forcing people to take that extra effort, and that exercise in itself helps people to reduce the amount of surplus they're creating. That's Dana Gunders, who helped put the issue of food waste on the map back in 2012 with a report that documented just how much goes to waste. The state of California is also expanding grants to nonprofits to recover all of this surplus food that may have just gone to waste in order to feed hungry people. Millions of pounds of produce a year. One group leading the way is called Food Forward. It's run by Rick Namias. Collecting food donations is nothing new, but what you see here is taking it to a whole new level. It's the quantity that's kind of amazing. We've got melons, kale, watermelons, corn in the back. It's like a supermarket. 
thanks to a $500,000 grant from the state, Namias bought this warehouse equipped with a refrigerator that can hold up to 150,000 pounds of produce. All of this will double the amount of food he can recover. People just don't understand the scale of overproduction. And there's no one in, let's say, you know, fruit and veggie land control tower figuring out exactly where the stuff should be going and coming from. So the result is waste. Okay. He's so out to change matter. this. Food so Forward's developed a sophisticated yeah. system to match the wholesalers who have surplus food to give away people with the people who need it. And this year, they'll distribute food to 1,800 hunger relief agencies in Southern California. A lot of the surplus comes from farms, farmers markets, and right here, the LA Wholesale Food Market. We woke up at 5 a.m. to check it out. Do you have any deals yet this morning? Yes, right now we just got offered eight pallets of peaches, 14 to 15,000 pounds. Whoa, of that's peaches. a lot. Yes. Louise Yepes is part of the Food Forward operation team, and his job is to nag vendors who are getting ready to toss stuff out. Bueno, gracias por todo. By 6 a.m., Yepes has recovered close to 80,000 pounds of produce. So why would any of these vendors be offering you donations? What's wrong with this produce? A lot of the produce that gets donated get donated mostly because there's minor imperfections. And that's not the only reason. They told me that it was this pallets over here, that pallet, this pallet, all these pallets right here. Wow, all going to go to waste. They haven't been sold yet, and they have a new shipment of peaches coming in, so they want to get rid of them before they have to throw them away. The issue with this particular boxes of peaches is that there is some decay. But and some of them are good, so you don't yeah. want to throw away the whole box. Unfortunately, this particular company is short on refrigerated space. They want to donate them. By 10 a.m., these peaches and all the other produce are loaded onto this truck. First stop, Resurrection Church in East L.A. Families are lined up waiting. Back at the wholesale market, I asked Yuppies if he's worried about not having enough food. There's definitely enough food in Los Angeles and in local food systems that we are definitely able to feed everyone in Southern California. The issue is not necessarily with the food being available, it's a distribution problem. Getting it to the people yes. in need. It's just a logistics problem. You gotta create the bridges between the abundance and the people in need. Picking up this afternoon. A logistics problem that Namias has a fix for. He's got new software to help track the enormous amounts of produce they're moving in and out. We're able to track food in real time. We're able to see where the trucks are at, what is on each truck, where it's coming from, where it's going, and it's allowed us to scale. And that scale is what's needed. California is not the only state taking action. Five states and five cities have restrictions aimed at diverting food waste from landfills. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Alice Naubry of NPR News in Los Angeles.